Thanks. And what was your experience like writing that, uh, being part of that wonderful big hit back in the 70s? Uh, when will I see you again? It was fantastic. I mean, you know, the different countries that we've been able to travel to and, and meet new people and the excitement of it well, all was Joey, great. Joey, hold on, hold on, Joe. Yeah, well, that's good because uh, we have some talk some interesting things going on here tonight. Hold First on, of all, your experiences were were great with the uh, Soul Train and things that went on in Philadelphia as well. Right? We're not taking it. Oh, well, let, let us me about talk to her. Let me talk to her. Then we'll put Joey Reynolds on. He wants to record when uh, TSOP came about. We were, we were in the process of recording our first album with Philadelphia International. And they we were in the process of recording music for the, for the television show. And so they asked yeah, us if we would come in and uh, put some hmm? bits and pieces down on, on the uh, track. And voila, there you have it. Well, we have uh, Joey Reynolds from... From WOR, originally from OR, and then WKBW and every other radio station. Well, not not every no, other wait, station. Wait, are you, you on the air? Are we? Are, <laughs> no, this can is she a, hear me? Of course you can. No, she's you know, a friend my, of yours. She's one, been on your show. My one and only manager in the whole world was Tony Mamorella. Uh, don't yeah. those don't those headphones work? Yeah, I don't, yeah, they, yeah. Is that a little better, so Joe? Tony, Tony Mamorella and Bernie Bennett owned Swan Records. So Swan Records was a label that the Three Degrees were on with this particular. <laughs> And I was, uh, I had a song called, well, it wasn't a song, it was called Rats in My Room. I hardly call it music. But it was something that we recorded back then. And, and you know, Tony, when he uh, went to England, after he, he, he took the, the uh, uh, high road and left American Bandstand, he produced American Bandstand, mm -hmm. hired Dick Clark, as a matter of fact, because Dick was an announcer on WFIL television. And That's they, where you were, too. Yeah, well, Radio. they needed somebody clean. Because uh, Bob Horn had gone home with one of the girls from the show, one of the dancers, and got uh, got in trouble with her. You know, back in those days, they, they, uh, sexual crimes were not allowed. Uh, now, of course, it just makes you more famous. <laughs> but uh, he, or at least so the papers say. Well, and, and speaking of that, you know, the WFIL was owned by the Philadelphia Inquirer, which is Walter Annenberg, mm -hmm. and he they used his own newspaper to destroy his own talent. Mm -hmm. Were you friends with George Michael? Yeah, I was. Well, George came later. That was that was years later. Yeah. But, but when Dick Clark was a booth announcer and he was clean cut and uh, Bob Horn had always screwed up, so Tony went in the in the booth and hired him and put him on the air as the host of American Bandstand. Oh, and that's that's what happened. So we had the uh, Three Degrees came along as as uh, the same label that gave us Freddie Cannon. And um, the point of the whole story is that when Tony eventually went to England. And he had, uh, with his wife Ag, he had eight kids. Tony was a, was a real family man. Mm -hmm. He, uh, his wife insisted that he buy one of these records that she really loved, and he hated it. Uh, it cost them uh, five hundred dollars, and it was one side. It was called "She Loves You" by the Beatles. So, isn't that right? And yeah. he, he wound up with, uh, with a with a so on Swan Records. You'll see the Beatles with that one song, but nothing else, because the rest of it went to B.J. and then of course to. Uh, Capital Records on EMI. So by the way, Lois Harris from the Chantels has just arrived. Hi, Lois. Hi. Good to yeah, see you. Hi, Lois. Since Sorry. last year, I'm, I'm welcoming you back once again Thank because you. you are going to. I guess you're going to sing tonight. If you oh, don't sing tonight, don't so. we'll be really <laughs> talking tonight. <laughs> this is like a talk radio right, music. And, and I'll be and I'll, oh, oh. I'll be playing my accordion. Oh, do you have a question, sir? Yes, I do. Oh well, well then there's the microphone. There's a question for Carmine to Valerie Holiday. Your question. Hi, Valerie. Sir. How are you? You. I have a question for you. Are you familiar with the Royal Philharmonic and the Caravelli Orchestra's version of When Will I See You Again? Yes. Oh, how'd you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't measure up. How did I like it? Yeah. Right. Singing in front of the right. Royal right. Philharmonic? No, it's, in other words, they, they did these uh, interpreted versions of When Will I See You Again. Cover ah, versions. Cover. Okay. You're talking a musical. Yes, okay, an instrumental okay. version. How did I like it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, with all that, those instruments, it always adds a, a beautiful sound to it. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I, I think I, I lost a question, the, too. Well, okay. Rich Appel, uh, you, you step up to the mic. Ask her one question. Valerie, yeah. how are you? Uh, prior to your coming on, we had Tommy James on, and I, I know you were also signed to Roulette for a while. You had the, uh, there, you're, you covered Maybe, which the Chantels, of course, did. Mm. I'm like drawing a line between everybody on the show. Um, and of course, so Tommy talked so much about the fact that Roulette was 
run by the mob. And did you have any kind of experience with that at all during the time that uh, you recorded for, uh, for Roulette? Can you say what you with our manager? No. <laughs> but you sang the song uh, as Teddy, but you sang the, uh, sang the song maybe, like uh, the Lois did, uh, with Chantel. And you killed it. It was a, what a fabulous version that was. You liked that, didn't you? Oh, one of, the, one of the best. Not well, maybe not touching the original. You know, I get a. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because the original will always be the original. Yes. Andrew, you yes. wanted to say we one just, thing before we, just, we move on to the I next uh, one wonderful guest. There. Well, I did want to ask Valerie one question. Valerie, it's Andrew Martin. Do you happen to remember me? Probably no, not. She does now. <laughs> she does. <Yeah. laughs> okay, Valerie, I saw you and the other two ladies uh, at Iridium two years ago, and uh, we introduced ourselves afterwards. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, Tony. Come on in, Tony. I, I wrote about it. I, I don't do. know if you remember. Anyway, I just want to say for once and for all, you guys are still as incredible as you ever were. Thank you, Valerie Holly. What else would you like one, to tell our great audience tonight before we head on to the minutes. great fourth anniversary radio reunion party right here? And I have to remember that um, we are the one and the only radio Joey? Yeah. Well, there's six degrees of separation. Good to see it. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I was I was going to mention that uh, we have in the studio also. I brought a guest. I I, I, I think you noticed a beautiful young lady. Yes. Here. It's gorgeous. Her. Ellen Next Evans. Ellen Evans is the uh, uh, probably one of the most famous soap opera stars ever in history. She's been on every soap imaginable. <coughs> every one. Through the years. And, uh, Good to see you. Thanks for coming. And she has, uh, right now, I mean, you know, she doesn't care about doing soap operas because there is no, no there are no soap operas. That's a <laughs> good reason. Well, we need to create one. Maybe this show could become one at this point. I'm sure you would uh, make it. You, you might want, you want, want to say a little to her, too. Yeah, you know? we'll bring you on in a couple of moments from now. But in the meantime, we're going to do some Simon Says. But thanks, Valerie Holiday, for being part of this event. Thank you, right? Thank you very much. Mr. Frank Jack, just before we do uh, Simon Says, uh, I know you're going to the 1910 Fruit Company. He's going to appear with the customer.